Last time we were talking about how it doesn't matter if an object is moving horizontally or not. Gravity pulls on it the same. So once the only force acting on an object is gravity, the object is in free fall. And the horizontal component of its motion doesn't matter. Now this leads us to a principle called the independence of motion. And basically that says it doesn't matter what something's doing in the x direction or in the y direction. Those two things are independent of each other. And to demonstrate that, I have a little video I want to show you guys. So let's take a look. This video was posted by Harvard, so I'm glad they did this for us. Now, if we go ahead and play through this video, we can, we're going to watch these two balls. Now, this one is going to get hit, and it's going to get sent flying to the right, and this one over here is going to fall essentially straight down. So if we take a look, let's see what happens. And also listen to see if you can hear which ball hits the ground first. All right. So what we just noticed and what we just heard was hopefully that those two balls landed at exactly the same time. Now I'm going to back this up just a little bit and see if we can watch that. Okay, one more time. Okay. And let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. Those two balls do hit the ground at the same instant and that is because of the independence of motion. So what do we need to know? If those two things are independent, what does the time of flight depend on? What is it gonna what difference does it make? How are we gonna figure out the trajectory of this object? Well, let's take a look at what we do know. When something's moving horizontal, and this is important where we're gonna have to keep our x separate from our y, because like we just established, these two things are independent. So when something's moving horizontal, then the initial velocity in y is zero, but the initial velocity in x is just v. We don't know what it is. Now, um, the final velocity in x is also v because there's no forces in the x direction that cause any acceleration, which of course means the acceleration in the x direction is zero because the net force in the x direction is zero. So I have this object and it doesn't matter if it's here or if it's here. x hasn't changed. There's not any forces in the x direction. Now, the y direction is a little bit different than that. Its initial velocity in y is zero because it's rolling on a horizontal surface. And even the instant it comes off that table, it's still zero. However, there is going to be some acceleration in y, and that acceleration is g. Now, it is important to establish our positives and negatives. So if positive is to the right and up, then technically this acceleration is negative g. And then, let's see, what else do I know? Well, it's got an initial position of... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call its initial height just y. Okay. And its final position is zero. It lands on the ground. So I have different information for x and y because they're independent of each other. And when I try to put these things together, there's only one thing that is common to both of them. And that thing that's common to both of them is time. The time it takes this thing to fall and hit the ground is the same amount of time this thing has to fly this way. So we're going to use time over here and time over here to figure that out. Now this is all the information I have in X. I don't, I've got velocity and whatever the time from Y is. So if I want to know how long this thing is going to be in the air so I can figure out where it's going to be, then I'm going to switch and I'm going to look only in the Y direction for now. So in the Y direction I know my initial velocity is zero because it was moving horizontally. I know the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, but it's negative because it's down. I know its initial position and I know its final position. So let's see if I can get time from that. Well, there is one kinematic equation that involves all those things. Now, usually I write it this way, delta x equals one-half at squared plus v naught t. However, that delta x is a change in position and x is generally horizontal position. So we're gonna switch this to the y one half a t squared plus v naught t. But really delta y, that's change in y, is just final minus initial, so y minus y naught. So what I really have is y minus y naught equals one half a, well a is really g, but g is down, so it's negative, plus v naught t, except v naught in the y direction is zero. So putting that together, what I have is y, which is actually where it ends, zero, minus y naught. So negative y naught equals negative one half g uh, t squared. I forgot that up here. I'm like, I'm missing something, right? A t squared. So now if I want to solve this for t, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to multiply both sides by two. That clears my fraction. So now I have negative two y naught 
equals negative g t squared. And now I can divide both sides by negative g, divide by negative g, and I get t squared equals 2y naught over g. And I can square root both sides and I see t equals 2y over g this is why not square root. Now I want you to think about that. This tells me the only thing that this motion depends on is its initial position in the y direction and its, and its acceleration in the y direction. If I know those two things then I can figure out how long it's in the air. And then I can sub that t that I have into this equation for delta x. Okay, but delta x, 1 half at squared plus v naught t, I want to know how far it goes. Well the acceleration in x is zero so that cancels out and I just have delta x equals v naught t. So that's pretty easy. Once I get t from the y direction, I can use it in the x direction to figure out where this thing is going to end up. Now, it is incredibly important to note that this was for a horizontal velocity. And why does that matter? Well, right here, we crossed out our initial velocity in y. And if our initial velocity in y is not zero, then this equation has to be solved using a quadratic instead of using a square root because we have this, this extra t term in here that we got rid of. So you can only use this equation when the initial velocity in y is equal to zero. If that's not the case, then this equation has to be reworked to account for that initial velocity in y.